Hey y'all, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Doses of Tempest. If you are returning, hey boo, hey. Oh, hey, so the last video you guys heard me talk about endocrine disruptors and things that you should avoid so that you are not impacting a, a hormonal imbalance. So right now, I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about the food. So what we put in our body. In our previous video, we already talked about endocrine disruptors, and those are the things that we put on our body. So skincare, hair, body, lotion, all of those things, and some brands that we can, we can go to to help eliminate the risk of the endocrine disruptors, which can create a hormone imbalance. So now we talked about what we put on our body. Now we're gonna talk about what we put in our body. So what that means, that means that's the kitchen. That's all things food. So come with me and let's go. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna talk about something that's super important if you have fibroids or you wanna make sure that you just keep your um, you want to keep your hormones balanced. So anyone who's dealing with fibroids, it gets easier, I promise. If you're one of those individuals who suffer with pain, one of your key things that you will have to do is change the way that you're eating. So let's jump right into it. We're diving into the relationship between the food you eat, the vitamins, and the herbs you take. And how they affect your hormone balance, which you all know plays a huge role in the growth of your fibroids. So if you've been wondering what to eat, what to avoid, you're at the right place. Come on. So let's start with the things that you should avoid. These are small changes. It will make a big difference. And fibroids feed off the excess estrogen. Remember, we already talked about endocrine disruptors and how it mimics estrogen, which causes an imbalance. Food does the same thing. All right, so here are the foods we want to avoid when it comes to our hormones and create more estrogen in the body. All right, I hope you guys are taking notes. Some of this is gonna be a little hard, but we'll get through it and it's okay. All right, first thing first, processed foods. I know, I know, I know. If you are unaware, processed foods could be like chips, cookies, frozen foods, things like that, or which have like added sugar and added refined carbs. Oof, that's what we want to avoid because that can cause, a, a, that can cause inflammation and it makes the hormones go haywire. It just makes the hormones go do, 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 do. And we don't want that. We want the hormones to be like friends, not enemies. We want them to like each other, be at the same eat at the same level, not one dominating the other. Okay, and then when you have an excess of sugar, because again, these processed foods have added sugar, and when it has added sugar, it causes inflammation. The excess sugar also increases insulin, which can also turn into more estrogen in the body. You kind of see a theme here. So for all of the processed foods, we want to keep those to a minimum. All right. Taking all the information. Don't try to make all of these changes overnight. Just start to be mindful of this, because if you try to take all of this and just change overnight, your body will tell you what's going on and you'll have more cravings. So just take it step by step. Next food that we should avoid red meat. So red meat is often treated with hormones, unfortunately, and it comes for our animals that's fed with estrogenic compounds, which that causes more estrogen into our system that basically makes the fibroids grow. Okay, one of the other things that we want to avoid, which is one of the big ones, is dairy. If you guys see my past blogs, you guys will hear me mention about um, dairy foods. And in particular at this moment has been cheese that has been like, uh-uh. So yeah, dairy. 
dairy is our third big one that we want to avoid if we have fibroids or just trying to make sure that we keep our hormones balanced. So like red meat, uh, non-organic dairy products can contain hormones. So it's best to choose plant-based milk like almond milk or oak milk. You can go for organic dairy if you can, um, but that, you know, that definitely helps. Last but not least, one of the other things that we want to avoid is alcohol. Ooh, y'all know this is bad. This is this is hard for me, but don't be like me. Be better, okay? So, alcohol is one of those things you want to limit alcohol as much as you can because alcohol basically all it does is raise your estrogen level because of the, the of the sugar intake. So, when it raises your estrogen level, again, here's the thing: alcohol raises your estrogen level, which causes inflammation. Both worsen your fibroids symptoms so it's a recap on the foods that we want to avoid you have processed foods red meat alcohol and dairy okay so we got all the bad foods to avoid out the way now let's talk about the foods that we should maintain and keep all right so here are the foods that we should have if we're trying to maintain our hormone levels and or have fibroids. First up, you want to do your greens. Greens is your best friend. So your greens are what I'm speaking of are like spinach, kale, broccoli. Here, fresh broccoli. These are rich in vitamins and minerals, but more importantly, they help your liver process and remove excess estrogen from your body. Certain veggies like broccoli has this um, has this compound called DIM. It helps your body balance estrogen level, D-I-M. So that is one of the good things that just helps your estrogen levels stay in check. Mm. Oh, here's a second one. Berries, 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 berries. So especially blueberries and strawberries, they're packed with antioxidants, which helps with inflammation. Plus they're low in sugar, so it does not spike your insulin level. Here's another one. Dun, 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 dun. Flax seeds. Flax seeds are like your defensive line. It's like your defensive end when it comes to uh, estrogen levels. So they block the excessive estrogen in your body. You can add flax seeds into like your smoothie, your oatmeal, even your salad. It does not change the flavor of the meal of the item that you're putting it into. It only just elevated. So you won't even taste a difference, but a tablespoon of this goes a long way. Oh, then with that, don't forget, here's another one. Brown rice. Here's one brand. Brown rice keeps your blood sugars level and in turn, it supports healthy hormones. And one of the last foods that we should incorporate into our, um, into our diet is da -da -da -da, salmon. This is wild caught salmon. This is from Trader Joe's, but oh, it's upside down. First of all, you want to try to get wild cut salmon, but salmon, 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 salmon. Things that have two legs or less will be your best friends. Your best will be salmon because it is packed with omega-3s, which are your healthy fats. So your healthy fats, i.e. like salmon, like chai, chai seeds, and all nuts are a couple examples of um, foods that reduce inflammation and support or healthy hormones. All of these things that I mentioned are essential for healthy hormone health. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to vitamins. These are a couple of vitamins that has been proven and linked to uh, the, the growth of fibroids. So number one, vitamin D. Vitamin D has been linked to fibroid growth and this vitamin helps regulate the cell growth. So many of us don't get enough vitamin D. So that's why it's super important for you to go outside after you put on sunscreen, 
but to go outside and get natural vitamin D. But here's a pro tip. When you are consuming vitamin D, you want to pair it up with vitamin K. Vitamin D does this thing, but it was not, it will not absorb in your body without vitamin K. If you do not get enough sunlight with vitamin D naturally, go ahead and consider vitamin D. And when you're using or taking a product with vitamin D, make sure it has vitamin K in it as well so that it helps your body to absorb the vitamin D. Okay, next up, vitamin B complex. Here we go. So vitamin B complex is a super important for hormone balance because they help your liver metabolize estrogen. Plus, they can boost your energy levels and support a healthy nervous system. So it's a win-win. Last but not least, here's another vitamin that you should consider taking, consuming, and or making sure that your levels are just right. That last vitamin that I recommend is magnesium. Magnesium helps ease cramps. It helps reduce inflammation. And it helps the balance of fibroid growth. So we talked about some foods that you should avoid. We talked about some foods that you should make sure you incorporate into your daily diet. Also, we talked about some vitamins that you should take daily to ensure that you stay balanced with your hormones. Then last but not least, the other thing that's going to help you are the herbs. So here we go. Here are three different things you can consider as an herb, there has been one to shown to balance hormones and even reduce fibroid growth. Here they are. First up is chaseberry. This herb has been used for centuries to help, to help support hormone balance and it helps lower estrogen levels and reduce fibroid growth. So you can take this as a supplement or put it in your drink. The next herb I wanna talk about is ginger. So ginger reduces inflammation, it helps with pain and improves circulation, plus it's the natural way to help support your overall reproductive health. And a pro tip, ginger helps also with migraines if you suffer from those. And the last herb that I want to talk about have been used for centuries and centuries, and that is turmeric. Turmeric is packed with anti-inflammatory properties that can help reduce the size of fibroids over time. You can take this in supplement forms or you can add into your cooking. We want to focus on leafy greens, berries, healthy fat, omega-3s. Those are nice. And a couple of our daily vitamins is vitamin D, vitamin B complex, and magnesium. Remember, when you consume vitamin D, make sure it's paired with vitamin K so that your body absorbs the vitamin D. So remember, women, our bodies are so amazing. It does so much. Remember, take your time, listen, but also fuel your body with the right stuff so they can take care of you. Okay, so that's the end of my information when it comes to food. I hope I gave you a couple examples of items that you should lean to and some things that you should lean away from when you have fibroids. Um, there are so many other healthy food options. Just make sure that you read, 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 know what's good for your body. Know that's what's going to help balance your hormones. So I'm about to actually, got some celery here, and I'm about to juice some celery because celery is good with inflammation as well. So to reduce that bloating and all of that, that yucky stuff, I'll be drinking celery juice this week. Here's a bonus. If you are overwhelmed with food choices or in trying to get a, a hang of a healthier lifestyle, healthier food habits, meal prep, plan, plan, plan. When you plan, it removes the room for error. It removes the room of you going to get something quick and easy because you don't have anything prepared. So meal prep, also juicing. Juicing weekly helps also with uh, making sure that you target on your goals for inflammation and just overall just healthy, just, just a healthy lifestyle. So. I'm out to juice, 
I appreciate you guys tuning in with me for today. Remember, this can be overwhelming, but if you plan, if you plan your food out right, know what to eat, know what to avoid, you'll be on the right track. Until the next time, I appreciate you guys hanging with me. Bye. Just humble, they didn't appreciate Young, wealthy, and wretched I'm the hood, bitches, mother